morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. My name is John Gerber. I'm a member of the Board of Trustees of the Unitarian Universalist Society of Amherst. I use he, him pronouns. Welcome to you, old friends and new, young and old, in the Zoom and in the sanctuary. You are an essential part of our celebration today. Whether today is your first or your thousandth Sunday in our midst, we are stronger because you are here. We are one people of many faith, beliefs, many origins, many sexualities, and many genders. We are all growing, all learning, all loved. Just as you are, you are welcome here. As part of our effort to seek feedback on the governance of our congregation, you are invited to join us during the first 15 minutes of any regular meeting of the Board of Trustees, chatting with us during the social hour, or by using the email address board at uusaamherst.org. We are grateful to be with you in community. Good morning. My name is Louise Grossline. I'm co-chair of the UUSA Green Sanctuary Committee with Jeff Clark, who is in Norway and not with us this morning for obvious reasons. I use she, her pronouns. Each year in April, we offer an Earth Day service as part of our goal of continuing to advocate for our Earth. Thank you. Do I need to start over? Polly Peterson is serving as our worship leader. Gordon Wise and Ellen Cosmer and Ann Perkins will also be speaking. It's a really big committee. Would everyone who's here and who's on Zoom please stand up or wave? And could our tech team show the Zoom people? Look at this. It's a really big committee. There, I know there's someone, I, we may not see people on Zoom. I know we have a member who's in Tennessee who's Zooming in from there. Um, this year, our speaker is Reverend Joe Murphy, Executive Director of the Universalist, Unitarian Universalist Mass Action, called UU Mass Action. Until I saw the name of the organization written down, I labored under the misapprehension that it was connected to UMass. But in fact, it's a UU organization based in Boston. Their mission is to organize UUs in Massachusetts to work for social justice. UU Mass Action projects have included increasing minimum wage, reforming critical criminal law, stopping a pipeline tax so that taxpayer money cannot be used to build tax pipelines, advocating for transgender rights, preventing homelessness, and working for sustainable energy efficiency and climate change. Reverend Joe was eager to come speak at our Earth Day service this year, but family events came up that made it impossible for her to be here in person. She recorded her sermon for us, and we will hear it later in the service. We begin with a reading suggested by Reverend Joe. Good morning. I'm Gordon Wise, a member of the UUSA Green Sanctuary Committee. I use he, him pronouns. Our call to worship is a poem called Perhaps the World Ends Here by Joy Har Harjo. The world begins at a kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. The gifts of earth are bought, brought and prepared set on the table. So it has been since creation, and it will go on. We chase chickens and dogs away from them. Babies teeth in the corners. They scrape their knees under it. It is here that children are given instructions on what it means to be human. We make men at it. We make women. At this table, we gossip, recall enemies, and the ghosts of lovers. Our dreams drink coffee with us as they put their arms around our children. They laugh with us at our poor falling down selves and as we put ourselves back together once again at the table. This table has been a house in the rain, an umbrella in the sun. Wars have begun and ended at this table. It is a place to hide in the shadow of terror, a place to celebrate the terrible victory. We have given birth on this table, 
and have prepared our parents for burial here. At this table we sing with joy, with sorrow. We pray of suffering and remorse. We give thanks. Perhaps the world will end at the kitchen table while we are laughing and crying, eating the last sweet bite. We light this flame to invite a world of peace where we heal the wounds, where we share what we have with one another, where justice is, is another word for relationship and we listen to what love has to say. The hymn we're going to next be singing is 1007 in the Teal Hymnal, There is a River Flowing in My Soul. share with you a reading named A Newt Note by Brian Doyle. One time, years ago, I was shuffling with my children through the vast, wet, moist, dripping, enormous, thicketed, webbed, muddy, epic forest on the Oregon coast, which is a forest from a million years ago. And I'm going to lose my place. <laughs> Could somebody just keep it handy in case I need it? <laughs> okay, where am I? The forest that hatched the biggest creatures that ever lived on this bruised, blessed earth. All due respect to California and its redwood trees, but our cedars and firds made them redwoods look like toothpicks. And my kids and I were in a biggest creature mood because we had found slugs way longer than bananas and footprints of elk that must have been gobbling steroids. And a friend just told us of finding a bear print the size of a dinner plate. And all of us had seen whales in the sea that very morning. And all of us had seen pelicans too which look like flying pup tents. And how do they know to all hit cruise control at the same time? Does the leader give a hand signal? As my son said. And one of us had seen the two ginormous young eagles who lived somewhere in this forest. So when we found the biggest stump in the history of the world, as my daughter called it, we were not exactly surprised. It was basically totally understandable that suddenly there would be a stump so enormous that it was like someone had dropped a dance floor into the forest. That's the sort of thing that happens in this forest. And my kids, of course, immediately leaped up on it and started shaking their groove thangs and dancing themselves silly, and I was snorting with laughter until one kid, the goofiest, 
why we did not name this kid Goofy when we had the chance in those first few dewy minutes of life, I will never know. Well, this kid, of course, shimmied over to the edge and fell off head over tea kettle, vanishing into a mat of fern nearly as tall as me. But the reason I tell you this story is that while we were all down in the moist velvet dark of the roots of the ferns, trying to be solicitous about Goofy and see if he was busted anywhere serious, but also trying not to laugh and whisper the word doofus, <laughs> one of us found a newt. Oh my God, Dad, check it out. Of course, the newt, rattled at the attention, peed on the kid who held it. And of course, that led to screeching and hilarity. And of course, on the way home, we saw damselflies mating, which also led to screeching and hilarity. But the point of this story isn't pee or lust, however excellent a story about pee or lust would be. It's that one day, my kids and I were shuffling through the vast, wet, moist forest. We saw so many wonders and miracles that not one of us ever forgot any of the wonders and miracles we saw. Even though we saw only tiny shreds and shards of the ones that are there. And what kind of greedy, criminal, thug thieves would we be as a people and a species if we didn't spend every iota of our cash and creativity to protect and preserve a world in which kids wander around gaping in wonder and hoping nothing else rubbery and astonishing will pee on them? You know what I mean? <laughs> Good morning. I'm so sad I couldn't be with you here this morning, but I hope at some point to meet all of you in person. We're going to begin with a social justice stretch. I encourage you to do this in whatever way you find comfortable, but I want you all to take your hands and reach down to the grass roots to get power, maybe touch your toes, reach up to the sky for inspiration, Stomp out injustice with your feet and move with the winds of change. So again, it's reach down to the grass roots for power, up to the sky for ins inspiration, stomp out injustice and move with the winds of change. And you can do this a couple times saying the words and then perhaps maybe a couple times not reaching Reaching down to the grassroots for power, up to the sky for inspiration, stomp out injustice and move with the winds of change. Welcome. Having an 11th, 11th month old requires me to live much more in the moment. I'm constantly checking on needs not my own that require gentle tending to. 
Though I have the privilege of living more in the moment, I also think about the world my child will grow up in and attach to this as the possible end of the world, or at least surviving pretty rough times. One of my favorite poems is by Joy Harjo, Perhaps the World Ends Here, the poem we heard at the beginning of the service. I love this poem because though it is about the end of the world, it is jam-packed with life. I'll read the beginning again. The world begins at a kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. The gifts of earth are brought and prepared, set on the table. So it has been since creation and it will go on. We chase chickens or dogs away from it, babies teeth at the corners. They scrape their knees under it. It is here that children are given instructions on what it means to be human. We make men at it, we make women. At this table, we gossip, recall enemies and the ghosts of lovers. Our dreams drink coffee with us as they put their arms around our children. They laugh with us at our poor falling down selves and as we put ourselves back together once again at the table. I read many articles throughout the year that talk about what to pack in your emergency bag, whether that be for the apocalypse, a flood or fire. When thinking about the candles, the knives, the canned goods to store away, I think it is also important to imagine what we should put aside spiritually for our spiritual packs. I could talk about putting things such as resilience and hope in this pack, but we need more than that. I think, of course, we need resilience and hope, but we also we need to be prepared with what gives us resilience. Where can we find it? Where in our bodies does it already live? What memories, what experiences can we draw from? What gives us hope? What gives us stamina, patience, compassion in the past, in the presence? What gives us patience and compassion that lives with us now? I think we already have what we all need to fill our spiritual pack. We just need to remember, we just need to compile and store away what gives us the spiritual sustenance we need and will need. When I think about climate change, I think about the inherent hope already embedded in our earth. The hope grounded in the fact that whatever may happen, whatever we may do to our earth, our climate, she will reconfigure herself. She will go through another ice age or recast herself in earthquake. Our earth will survive. Yes, it'll be in a different form, but she will survive. I wonder if we can take a note from her, a note about surviving but needing to change form, needing to pack a good bag of memories of how we are resilience and how we can change. The earth is resilience. She has a patient we cannot fully understand. She is joy. She is creative and free. In my spiritual backpack, I want to pack these things. I want to pack resilience. I want to pack joy, hope, patience, creativity, and freedom. I want everyone to take a moment and think about what they would like to pack along these lines. In honor of our earth, in honor of her creative resilience, let us think about what we can pack in our spiritual bags what can we pack in our spiritual bags that will preserve her, that will preserve us? What can we pack as we too can be creative, hopeful, and joyful in our survival? I know I am not present, but please take some time, a moment, some breaths to think about what you would pack in your spiritual backpack. Hmm. Today, I'm going to pack my bag of spiritual sustenance all found within the specific situation of teaching a class in a low security prison. While this spot is not the most hopeless of places, it is a prison, a place where people are seen as less human. 
Though we are in the month of April and talking about the environment, our earth and justice, I think the real focus needs to be on us. Again, our earth, our environment will reconfigure itself. It will emerge from great floods, but what about us? We need to gather our people. We need to pack our bags of all sorts of supplies. I am hoping that by packing my bag to go to a place where hope is not easily found in a prison, it will bring about more hope. It will bring to mind the ways in which hope itself can be resilient. I want to pack my bag to provide sustenance for myself and others. I will pack first resilience. When I think of packing resilience, I think of doing hard things. I think of difficult situations and moving from them and through them. And I also think about my dark maroon low top sneakers. I wear these sneakers every time I lead a class as part of the program Career Pathways. Career Pathways is a re-entry program for those incarcerated to learn more about the career landscape once they get out. These sneakers are often coupled with different clothing items, but I know they fit the requirement of what you can wear in a prison and they have never gotten me in trouble. So I wear them every time. Some of the participants are in this program because they have to be, but some choose to be and sit there taking notes, anxious about what awaits them in the outside world. Some are honest with me and tell me they will probably go back to what landed them in prison in the first place. But some light up when I ask them to write an elevator speech about their dream job. This to me, this light, this commitment is resilience seen by the tall minister in the low-cut maroon sneakers. Next, I'm going to pack joy. Joy in a prison can look like smiles that spread around the room when those incarcerated are asked, if you could be anywhere right now, where would you be? Joy looks like the smile that emerges when someone who has been incarcerated for over a decade says, home. Joy looks like a smile when someone who will be getting out soon says a beach, a beach anywhere. And then there's a special joy, a special joy that when upon departure, someone pats your arm and says, if you are ever in Providence, Rhode Island and in need of gold and gives me a wink. Third, I will bring hope. Hope in this pack looks like the website for the job database idealist written down in pencil on the back of a packet, written down as someone in the class is not going back to his life pre-prison. He doesn't have an in with a job with a friend. He wants to talk to kids about his life choices. He wants to search idealist.com for community social justice nonprofits. His persistence, his pursuit of a harder path and pencil noted dream looks and feels like hope. Creativity. Creativity here looks like a lollipop given to me made from unusual supplies found in a low security prison. Waxy, but also fruity, wrapped up in paper. Creativity looks and tastes like hope, like not giving up. Freedom. Freedom in this place doesn't look like an object or something written down. Freedom has more of a feeling, a heart burst that you feel when you open the spiritual backpack. A rushing of prison walls coming down, a recognition of humanity, a slight taste of some food, any food beyond these walls. A taste of an ice cream sundae, a cake someone's mom used to make, freedom taps on all the senses grounded in reality and moving forward with dreams. Freedom flirts with everything and the spiritual backpack, claiming them all as needed in a world where everyone is free. Now I want you to remember back when you were packing your spiritual bag and thinking about the words you wanted in it. I want you all to take a moment to shout them out. Part of packing this bag is remembering why we want to live. It is a practice in living. It is a practice in living amongst the rivers that are polluted and the ones that are clean. It is a packing 
to survive, to live amongst so much natural beauty, and to live amongst so much brokenness, both within ourselves and in our world. The particular pack bag I packed today is spiritually packed in a difficult place, in a place with few windows, with tons of cement, security walls, far away, it seems sometimes, from that beautiful natural beauty. It is filled with rules and practices that most often say the people there are less than. Packing this bag is a practice in living and the belief that we can still survive, because I think that is what we will need when the waters rise and the fires spread. I think we'll have to remember what it is to be alive and decide if we want to keep doing it. If we want to keep living with dreams and tools that create a better world than the one we exist in, the one that currently is struggling. In talks of the apocalypse, people frequently note how so much of the world has already experienced different types of apocalypse, from genocide to catastrophic weather. We have all witnessed the horrors of climate change as Californian fires burn past fire season, as Miami floods practically every day, and as our seasons here in Massachusetts seems to blend into each other in eerie ways. We are continually experiencing events that end people's worlds, that destroy home as they know it or just destroy it altogether. Let us collect sacred items that represent sacred truths, marooned sneakers and scraps of paper. Let us remind ourselves that we are all here, so we are already survivors, survivors who have had survivors before us, ancestors who had their own spiritual backpacks. Let us build beautiful, robust altars to them, let us bring them branches and water of the natural resources we hold close and dear. Let us continue to hold these sacred truths close. And finally, let us remember that these sacred truths come from us, are us. We are resilience, hope, creativity. We are freedom. We already have the tools. Let us gather at the kitchen table let us not be stingy in sharing our sacred packs. Packs we have that honor all it is to be alive. Amen and blessed be. I'm Polly Peterson, a member of the Green Sanctuary Committee. Um, and I'm going to invite you to rise in body or spirit to join in singing a hymn chosen by Reverend Joe, who also had planned to end her sermon with a song she was going to sing, but it didn't get onto the video. Um, our hymn this morning is hymn 354, 354, We Laugh, We Cry. We'll be singing verses 1 and 4 only. We laugh, we And we believe. 
morning. Can everybody hear me? My name is Pete Rogers, and I'm a member of the caring team. I use he, him pronouns. We come together in community to hold our joys and sorrows together, to share our strength, to ease one another's burdens, and to be known and loved in community. for the joys and sorrows that remain unspoken in our hearts. And now I'd like to offer a little while for us just to be in the silence. On Earth Day tomorrow, in this month of April and throughout the coming year, may we pay attention to what gives us resilience, hope, patience, and stamina as we face the many challenges of our changing world. May we strive to pack our spiritual backpacks with what we will need. But most of all, may we give thanks to the earth for its gifts and live each day in gratitude. I invite you to join me in responsive reading number 515 at the back of your gray hymnal. We lift up our hearts in thanks. I will begin and I will ask you to respond with the words in italic type. Can you hear? We lift up our hearts in thanks for the sun and the dawn, which we did not create. For food, which we plant but cannot grow. For this gathered company, which welcomes us as we are from wherever we have come. for all things which come to us as gifts of being from sources beyond ourselves. Please join me in singing hymn number 83, Winds Be Still. Thank you. 
to sing our closing song. You can stay right where you are and be held in the love of this congregation, or you are welcome to form a circle along the outer aisles as we sing, This Day We Come. What kind of greedy, criminal thug thieves would we be as a people and a species if we didn't spend every iota of our cash and creativity to protect and preserve a world in which kids can wander around gaping in wonder? On this Earth Day, let's commit ourselves to bringing our love and attention to the everyday miracles and kitchen table wisdom of this beautiful world. Go in peace.